Hello, YouTube friends. Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, today's video is about whether or not you should buy your uh, your cichlids as young juvies or whether you should buy them as large, uh, mature, colored up adults. Let's get into the pros and cons, the advantages and, and disadvantages of uh, buying them each each way and get into my conclusions at the end of today's video. Thank you for tuning in. Let's go ahead and uh, get this get this video under underway. So thank you so much for tuning in and let's go ahead and talk about this subject. There are uh, several points to consider when you when you're buying cichlids now I'm going to talk to you from years of experience of working with cichlids and uh, what I've run into so this is this is what's what's gone on with me and it may or may not apply to your situation but I hope it'll help if you're trying to stock a cichlid tank now one advantage of buying your fish young of course is cost if you try and buy a um, a fully grown male colored up African cichlid or really uh, even a South American, Central American cichlid that is already close to full size and in full bloom, right? You're going to be paying somewhere in the neighborhood of about 40 to $60 or more, depending on how rare that fish is. And uh, if there's shipping involved, you can add another... 40, 50, 60 dollars to that, and uh, you can get up into some pretty high, some high cost. Now, certainly, if you're a breeder and you're looking for a uh, to create a breeding group and you need a particular kind of fish, yes, it's going to be worth it. It's going to pay for itself. Uh, if you're a bit impatient and you don't like uh, waiting, and uh, that 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 also is going to be a factor. Now. That factor is perhaps not as much with the South American and Central American fish in that both the males and females have color once they reach maturity. With African cichlids, except for maybe a few exceptions that I'm aware of, only the males have color. In the case of the tank behind me, this is an all-male tank. And if you uh, tried to buy something like, let's say, this Coingi here, this Autopharynx tetrastigma, uh, a fully colored up hawk, uh, any one of these fish, you're going to be in the neighborhood of between forty and seventy dollars plus shipping, uh, it, unless you live near an amazing local fish store that can get it for you. So cost is a key. You can pick up a batch of juvies, unsexed, and roll the dice, or maybe between maybe ten bucks a fish, maybe less, plus shipping, of course, or if you get them locally. Now, when you do that, you do have other factors. You're probably going to have some die-off. Over the course of time, there might be some die-off. This is why I suggest you buy three to five, because if you do lose a couple for whatever reasons, aggression, illness, they're just not as strong as the other fish, whatever the reason might be, you are guaranteed to have at least one strong survivor. Also, you're going to reach a point where you're going to need to decide what to do with other fish. So, for example, you buy three fish, you pay 30 bucks, you bring them home. After about a year, one of them has obviously become the dominant, beautiful, colored up male. What do you do with the other two? You keep them in additional tanks. You take them back to the local fish store. Do you give them away on, you know, on Craigslist or something? So you are going to run into that at some point. Also, the time lapse. You are going to go for about six months to a year with drab gray fish. That's okay with you. And if part of the joy of keeping cichlids uh, is watching them color up, watching them go from being drab to these beautiful fish, then that's the way to go for you because it'll save you money. And if you're patient, and you have a place where you can take fish that you ultimately end up not wanting to keep, pick up three to five of the fish you're trying to get smaller, save yourself some money, and go ahead and raise them up. So, 
cost factor. The advantage goes to buying them as a juvie. You are going to spend time with gray fish. If you want an instant, oh wow, colored up, popping male, you're going to pay top dollar. So there's that advantage. You don't want to do what I've done on several occasions with both a hawk and an eye biter. I waited over a year raising these fish only to discover that they were females and I ended up giving them away to somebody who wanted to breed them. So um, you are, by paying more, you are going to be guaranteed a male. And again, that is a more important factor with your African cichlids than it is with your South and Central Americans. The ones I have over here, the uh, viejas, the ones I have behind me, the Nicaraguas, the, the uh, geos, geophagus, they're all beautiful. They're all beautiful fish, regardless of their sex. And that is uh, something that I found to be very, uh, very cool when I started adding South and Central American cichlids to my collection. Uh, prior to that, I was exclusively African cichlids. Other points to consider is, of course, the hardiness of the fish. I find that the larger uh, mature fish are less frail, less fragile, going to be hardier, more, more, uh, less likely to succumb to disease. Uh, I had, I remember one time I received a couple trouts. They were, oh, about an inch, about an inch long. Uh, very cute little guys, right? All drab. And of course, trouts get out to be, you know, 20 inches. I've got a trout in here that's, there he is right there. Look at that. Look at that beast. Beautiful fish. This little guy like this, you know? And uh, what ended up happening? I ended up losing that fish. He just became, um, he was just a little bit too frail, too fragile. And I lost him. And I lost the other one. I ended up with no trout. So these, these fish here, they're a bit hardier. They can take, uh, you know, you have a power outage, your temperature drops. Uh, something occurs with your source of water. You have a little little bit of a, a, a pH shift. You know, the, the, a fish this size can usually can usually weather something like that. Uh, your smaller, more fray, are, are, your smaller fish are going to be a lot more fragile. So the hardiness of the fish, whether or not you're willing to wait for them to color up, cost. Okay, these are all factors to consider when you're trying to, to decide do I grow them out or do I buy them large? Personally, I love watching fish color up. I remember I had an otter point. I had a peacock, an otter point that I, I watched go from a drab fish to a spectacular fish. And I really, really enjoyed that journey. I will also say that I've also been very frustrated when a fish has turned out to be uh, after a long period of time. And, you know, it was a cool fish. I was attached to the fish, liked the fish, but I wanted color and I ended up with a female. So um, if you have the patience, you have the time, you're willing to wait, you have the tanks, uh, buy them young, save the money, enjoy watching them blossom. But if you want that instant big pop that uh, that you know that 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 instant gratification of a beautiful large colored up male, you're going to want to go and pay the extra money and get fish like these. Also keep in mind when you buy large colored up males, you don't know for sure how old that fish is and sometimes you might end up buying a fish that's has been around for a long time. It doesn't have a lot of life left. So you pay top dollar and uh, that fish lasts about a year, two years, because you bought them late, you know, the fish was late in life and you lose a big colored up fish. A little juvie, you know you're gonna be with that fish for a fair, fair number of years. So another thing to keep in mind uh, when you're buying fish, when you buy from the from the seller ask ask the seller how old is this fish he's got three colored up males uh, one of them's a year and a half the other ones are three years old get the year and a half old one 
assuming that the size is going to fit your aquarium. If you have an aquarium full of 10 inch fish, don't throw a three or four inch fish in there. It might end up in the mouth of one of those fish. Keep that in mind. Another tip that I'll leave you with is uh, be sure to find out from your seller what they've been feeding your fish when you buy fish. Has that seller been sell uh, feeding them pellets? What kind of pellets? Has it, have they been feeding them frozen food, flakes? This will help you to transition the fish over to the kind of food you want to be using. So you put that fish in a 30-day quarantine tank. You feed them a little bit of the flakes that the seller was feeding them, but you mix in with those flakes some of the pellets that you would like to be feeding. And so you, make, you bring that fish over on a transition to be able to eat a more varied diet, the kind of diet that you like to feed the fish. Now, there are some foods that it's not going to matter what the seller was feeding them, your fish are going to go after it. Frozen krill, uh, brine shrimp, these fish go crazy over that. doesn't matter what the seller was feeding them. If I drop some frozen krill in there, it's going to get consumed. It's going to get attacked viciously. Okay, so just a few factors I wanted to share with you. I know some of you, uh, and one of the things I enjoy the most is when someone tells me, uh, Ben, I've decided to get into African cichlids because of your channel, or I had left African cichlids and now I'm back because of your channel. I really enjoy hearing that. And uh, so I want, I just wanted to share with you just some tips on stocking your tank and, uh, and that might help you in being able to put together uh, the best possible combination of African cichlids. I have found that uh, peacocks can be very, very uh, violent. Mabuna can be very violent toward peacocks. So I tend to keep peacock and haps, and, uh, but I have found the haps to be, despite being considered predators and the carnivores, and I have found them to be overall more peaceful. And I think it's because they are more, uh, they're, they're sort of more of a hierarchy fish. And when a fish establishes dominance, it settles everything down. Okay, we have the order, and in this tank, um, I know the autopharynx tetrastigma was the boss, but I think the living stone eye pretty much uh, is the boss in this tank, but doesn't really go after the other fish, probably because the fish are comparable or larger in size, and so he doesn't get away with much, but he is technically, technically the boss. All right. I hope that helps. Any questions you have about stocking your aquarium, ask them below and I will try to get to them. And uh, I hope to see you on Saturday for the Cichlids and Coffee live stream every Saturday at 11 a.m. That's Central Time. That's 9 a.m. Pacific and uh, noon Eastern. If you'd like to support the channel, consider becoming a garage a garage gang member become a patreon the details on how to do that are in the description under under this video all right thank you for tuning in and uh that's it for me bye bye